Okay, let's talk about the MES exam and specifically the middle and early secondary math certification exam. So if you're watching this video, I assume that you are um, either very bored <laughs> or you're taking this exam, right? So who else would be watching this video unless someone who's actually looking to take this certification exam? So um, a little bit about myself. I am a math teacher, uh, middle school math, high school math, even some college degree in math, master's degree. So I know what it's like to take these uh, certification exams. Um, now, this one in particular is uh, quite challenging um, in terms of, you know, you're talking about middle grade and early secondary level math, but I think uh, you need to really look and see what's on these exams. You're, you're, you're going to have to really be studying some uh, you know, math that's well above and beyond what you're going to be teaching. So pretty advanced stuff. Uh, and even, let's say your background, maybe you have, you know, you've taken calculus or differential equations and all that stuff. You know, I always like to reference it this way. You know, the math that you're going to be teaching over here or the math that you're really going to have to be in command of, you need to go back and review. Even if you have a, um, you know, good, strong math background, you have to review. I myself, you know, I have a degree in mathematics and I uh, had been away from math a bit before I went to take uh, the Praxis exam. And I'm not mistaken, and it's probably the case with a lot of these exams, I think the failure rate was somewhere around 50% of the people who took it the first time did not pass it. So that just tells you um, that, you know, people go into these exams thinking they're prepared and they're really not. And I believe that um, the, the failure rate um, was went down big time. I think like 75% of the people who took it the second time, you know, were able to pass it because people know, hey, you know, to take these exams seriously. So, you know, I know that you're a professional, you have a degree and um, maybe telling the things that you already know, but it's worth uh, st uh, stressing. So we're going to take a look at the practice problem here. I want to leave you with one other comment before we get going. If you're looking for a great uh, review program for this exam, I actually have a very comprehensive uh, math test prep course for the NES middle and early secondary math exam. I'll leave a link to that in, in the description of this video if you find that you like my teaching style. But let's get into this uh, problem here. So here I have something. I'm not going to give you too many hints. Of course, I'm going to solve it and we'll talk about it. But here I have something. Okay, you should know what I, you know, I have, and I want you to evaluate this. Okay, so it's i to the 33 power. So what is what is this here? And if you have a graphing calculator or scientific calculator that can do um, these type of functions, please put this away. I want you to do it by hand. So imagine you don't have your calculator. All right, so maybe give yourself a minute or two to do that if you think you know how to do it. If not, let's proceed. So what are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about complex numbers, right? Complex numbers. And I don't want to turn this into a whole topic about complex numbers, but it's something that you're definitely going to want to know for this exam. Okay, although you're likely not going to be teaching any complex numbers at the at the middle school level or freshman ninth grade that type of thing, for this particular exam, it's a, a topic that you're going to want to know because this is advanced algebra. You're pretty much going to be sticking with the real number system, but you know you never know uh, in your career as well. You might enjoy teaching math so much that hey you want to expand maybe teach some high school math which this is definitely going to be in in your uh, more advanced algebra courses so let's take a look at this so first of all we need to know what i is equal to let me kind of scoot this over oops and we'll uh, go through this all right so what is i equal to well, i is an imaginary number. It's equal to the square root of negative 1, right? But an imaginary number in total is a plus bi, right? So there's a real part to it and an imaginary part to it. But we don't really need to get too much into this to answer this particular question. What we do need to know is what i is equal to. And let's see what i squared is equal to. So if I square both sides, i squared is going to be equal to negative 1, right? Okay, so this is going to be sufficient, just this right here, to help us out for this particular problem. 
Now what you need to do uh, to handle this problem easily is we need to use our um, our knowledge of powers and exponents. So you can write i to the 33 power this way, i squared times 16 or to the 16th power. Let me write that a little bit better. So i squared to the 16th power. Okay, so this is going to give us what? i to the 32nd, but I, I need i to the 33rd, so I just times this by another i, right? You see where I'm going with this? So i uh, square to the 16th power is i to the thir uh, 32nd power times i, or i to the first, is equal to i to the 33rd power. So I'm just breaking this up. Okay, now why am I doing that? Well, this is the way we're going to answer this question, all right? So i squared here, we uh, already uh, see that i squared is equal to negative 1. So I can say, okay, i to the 33rd power is equal to negative 1 to the 16th power times i. Okay, so now what we have to do is figure out what this is, negative 1 to the 16th power. So how do we do that? Okay, that should be pretty intuitive just by patterns. So let's look, look here, um, negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 is a negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1, and I'm sorry with the redundant with the negative 1, but you'll see my point here, right? So negative 1 times uh, itself 4 times is back to positive, right? So you can see the pattern here that odd numbers, odd powers of negative 1 is going to get us back to negative 1. Even powers of negative 1 will get us back to positive 1. So here we have negative 1 to an even power, so this is just going to be a nice positive 1, okay? So positive 1 times i is simply just a positive i or just i, and that's it. So i to the 33 power is simply i. And that's how we do these type of problems. So again, uh, the whole gist of this problem was to just test your ability to, you know, you know, work with uh, a couple different things at once. So what are we talking about in this problem? Well, you're talking about different number systems. You're talking about complex number systems. Okay, you're talking about how to uh, your, use your knowledge of powers and exponents to um, basically. Uh, reconstruct this power into, into the product of two different powers. Okay, that's really important to do. And then, of course, we used your knowledge of imaginary numbers and uh, patterns, right? So this is a, uh, a good uh, quick review on just a sub-skill of working with complex numbers. Of course, there's much more to it, conjugates and everything else, how to graph them. But again, just because you're going to be just teaching middle school level type math, maybe pre-algebra, maybe algebra one, doesn't mean you don't have to have a real command of you know more advanced mathematics. Okay, so if you take a look what's on the, um, this test, you know you're going to have to study well above and beyond uh, this, and that's I'm sure you probably already know that. So do your work, even though you have um, a strong math background or you like math, and that's great. Okay, uh, obviously if you didn't like math, you wouldn't be pursuing this certification. So let's go ahead and wrap up uh, this particular video. Again, um, if you, you know, resonate with my teaching style, I have a great test prep course for this. So I'm going to leave a link again in the description of this video. You can check that out. I also literally have hundreds of um, videos on my YouTube channel and I'm posting all the time. Why? Because I am extremely passionate about math. And um, so if you like my style of teaching, you know, hope you uh, become a subscriber. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of content on my channel already that will help you out tremendously for this uh, particular uh, test. Hey, if you like this video, I would certainly appreciate a thumbs up and leave us some feedback. Let me know why you're, um, you know, choosing this particular exam and not maybe the middle school level, or do you intend to go on to the high school level? Um, of course, the high school level exams are even more challenging you know you're going to even be tested with some calculus concepts and things like you know along those ways because you know in today's high schools you know it's pretty advanced you can be taking calculus etc and even in middle school things have expanded 
uh, much more than they were years and years ago where it was typically you know you went up to pre-algebra not many people did algebra one but now you have a lot of honor students doing algebra one you know um, in eighth grade and you know that, that that's how they're getting to the calculus level as a senior so anyways um, again I want to congratulate you on your um, choice of career being a teacher is not easy however it's extremely uh, rewarding but you got to put in the work because it is a profession okay so study hard for this exam thank you for your time and I wish you all the best have a great day